Derbauer just modded the Asus ROG 5090 to pull nearly 800 watts, and it actually beat a $7,000 Pro graphics card. MSI dropped the Toy Story-themed PC with a Buzz Lightyear GPU and a Woody motherboard because, sure, why not? And one poor guy paid two grand for a 5090 and got an empty shell. And somehow, the Navy Exchange is selling real 5090s at MSRP, while the rest of us are very busy getting scammed online. You know the drill. Let's get into it. All right, guys, Derbauer just turned the 50 into a monster, modded it to pull 800 watts, and it beat the $7,000 Pro NVIDIA card. Let's check it out. The ASUS ROG 5090 Astral Shunt Mod unlocks 800 watts of power and surpasses the RTX Pro 6000 in benchmarking. Check this out. This is tricking the RTX 5090 into enabling a higher power limit. All right, so how do you trick a 5090 into enabling you to uh, get some more power pumping through the card? Well, essentially, these cards have shunt resistors and the ROG Astral has six of them. The Founders Edition card only uses one shunt resistor and these are meant to measure the electrical current. In GPUs, they're just these little uh, kind of small resistors placed on power delivery circuit near the 12 volt connectors, which <laughs> you're getting a little crazy when you're talking about power in 12 volt connectors, especially with high end cards. That lets the cards controller sense how much current is flowing. So in plain terms, lower resistance means that more current gets through and Derbauer was able to get a little bit more power pumping through it. In fact, 800 watts to be specific. Let's dig into this. Derbauer has found time to take one of the most high-end and most expensive GeForce RTX 50 series graphics cards apart. His video isn't a casual review of the graphics card, which is already done by others, but he said, hey, let's check out the difference between air-cooled model of the card and the liquid-cooled version, which gave him a little bit of room to do some overclock. This is a liquid-cooled ROG Astral GPU. It's got two and a half slot thick cooling solution installed on the graphics card already ready. That's out of the box. It also has a 360 millimeter radiator that has three fans on it. So total fan count just with all of that is four, which is the same number as the air cooled model because you got three here and then you've got one back there on the back of the card as well. So just like the air cooled version, you've got 600 watt power limit, which obviously can't be changed through the software. This is the limit of the power scaling as well, which is designed to provide this much power, something that would otherwise require 450 watt eight pin power connectors. And just to give you some context, this graphics card with this modification, I'm pretty sure that it's pulling more wattage than like your kitchen microwave. I mean, we're talking about a ton of power here. Of course, standards aside, the cable can physically feed more power. However, this is definitely not the intended or recommended use for the cable, given what we know about overheating and melting. I mean, you are quite literally playing with fire by doing this in every sense of the word. In fact, Derbauer himself showed what can happen if increased current flows through one of the six 12 volt power cables. In short, it can read to melting. But for fun, short overclocking sessions, it gives additional perspective on what the limit of the GPU is and the power cabling as well. All right, so what's the process of doing this testing? First, obviously, uh, he tests the card without doing any modifications, right? So he tested it before doing mods, and it runs at about 2800 to 2820 megahertz in 3D Mark Speedway while maintaining temps under 60 degrees Celsius. The ROG Astral LC can easily reach the design maximum power limit, and as shown in this GPU Z software, it really hits the ceiling at 600 watts. Then comes the modding, which is a shunt mod. That's a physical change to the PCB, which involves replacing, bypassing, or adding extra resistors to existing shunt resistors. So what did your Bauer do? He added some additional resistors in parallel to the existing ones and reduced the resistance. And then he explains he will trick the power management circuit to see 30% less power consumption. So he is really just tricking the hell out of this card to produce as much wattage as possible through the card itself, which is very, very interesting. The modification alone, without any changes at all, already increased the power consumption from 580 to 600, all the way up on the high end to 720 watts. Then he went through GPU tweak, which is Asus's own OC software, increased the voltage and pushed the power consumption to 750, 786 watts. Now here's one of the craziest things about this, is by doing this, you know, we just had the $7,000 Blackwell workstation GPU come out, which is a beast. And it was claimed to be the new king of gaming GPUs. Of course, no one is using this for gaming. It's a workstation GPU, but very, very powerful. It's got insane amount of VRAM. It's just a crazy card. Well, check this out. The increase in performance was expected and the card could now surpass the flagship Blackwell GPU for desktops, the RTX Pro 6000 model, which features more cores and a similar power limit to the 5090 Astral. However, the Astral receiving an extra 200 watts headroom 
room blurred the difference in GPU clocks. Let's take a look at the comments. I'm only gonna read one comment. It's this one. Accurate. That'll do. MSI built a full Toy Story PC. You've got a Buzz Lightyear GPU, a Woody motherboard. And you know what? I think it actually looks sick. Let me know what you think. Let's check this out. MSI Toy Story limited edition PC hardware. Oh, it's been revealed. We've got the 5070 Buzz Lightyear GPU and a Woody motherboard. Boy, this is just the age of IP marrying itself to tech. We've got Disney involved now. We've really come a long way, haven't we? MSI teamed up with Pixar and they're celebrating the 30th anniversary of Toy Story. Has it really been 30 years? I was five years old when Toy Story came out. I'm old. I'm feeling old, boys and girls. Let me know if you're feeling old in the comments and maybe hit subscribe while you're down there, just for fun. This was revealed during Computex. The company is launching a special line of hardware inspired by beloved characters from the series. Now, look, we've got this motherboard, this Woody motherboard. This is terrifying. Is it cool? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Also, it's a little weird. It takes, you've got to be a big Toy Story fan to be putting this in your PC, but it is kind of cool in its own special way. Check it out. MSI claims that Woody's going to make sure that your system doesn't lag as long as it's smoother than a snake in a boot. The real star here is the RTX 5070 from the gaming trio series. This is the Buzz Lightyear Edition GPU. This is the one that everyone is so excited for and I think actually looks pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Check this out. It's kind of fun. Features a custom color scheme and you've got a backplate inspired by everybody's favorite Space Ranger. You've got some galactic flair there too. Check that out. This is a little bit reminiscent of the 7900 XTX Starfield card. You know, it's got the space vibes going on. Makes a lot of sense. This was a really cool card, by the way. I love this card. Unfortunately for global fans, uh-oh, the Toy Story series will be exclusive to Taiwan. There's no plans for international sales or support. So you've got to uh, order it from Taiwan, ship it internationally, pay an arm and a leg, or get a passport and go travel to pick it up. And they've even got a full system available for pre-order. <laughs> will you look at that? The old space crane. That is kind of cool. Oh, let's see what the comments have to say. But why? Cuz licensing, baby. It's all about licensing. This dude paid $2,000 for a 5090 and he got a cooler with no chip, no memory, just air. Let's take a little peek, shall we? All right, this guy paid two grand for what was advertised as an RTX 5090. And as uh, you might be able to guess by this point, he didn't get no RTX 5090. This involves a Zotac card too. You guys remember what's been going on with some of these Zotac cards? Talk about bad luck. You had Micro Center. Guy bought a 5090. The box was filled with backpacks. They found a bunch of other ones in the warehouse. Also, someone buys a Zotac 50, I think it was 5090, 5080 on eBay. The box is filled with pasta and rice. I mean, not great. <laughs> not great news. Zotac, I don't mind their cards. I think they're good. I've, I'm using PNY in my build. I've used Zotac before. I have no problem with them. But when it comes to the secondhand market and scammers, boy, that has been the card of choice as of recent. Check this out. This is once again, another story where a scam unfolds where the GPU doesn't even have the entire GPU package and VRAM chips on the card itself. The high-end NVIDIA GPU scams keep repeating. Last month, we saw the boxes being filled with backpacks, rice, and pasta, but this time, the GPU, it was in the box this time, which is kind of cool, but guess what? It didn't work. Not ideal. This is YouTuber Northwest Repair. He does a great job, by the way. If you don't subscribe to his channel, you absolutely should. Uh, he showcased an RTX 5090 GPU. This is Zotac, and after going through a difficult process of removing the bad screw from the PCB, he was finally able to show what was underneath the GPU giant heat sink. Shockingly, this wasn't another case where the GPU had a different substrate or a different GPU chip as we recently saw with some of those 4090s, but this 5090 had the entire substrate absent. It had its own GPU substrate and the GPU chip completely ripped off of the PCB. The RTX 5090 is equipped with a GB202 die and is the most expensive part on the GPU. Surprisingly, there was no memory module present on the PCB as well. All the GDDR7 memory chips were ripped off as well. As per some reports, the GPU chip and memory modules together cost 80% of the total cost. That's where all the money is on the card. But not only useless, it's also now worthless. So essentially this guy paid $2,000 for what amounts to be a very, very expensive paperweight. You've got no chip, no VRAM, just a hollowed out lie with thermal paste. And you know, at least I think a plus of some of the other scams is at least rice has some sort of nutritional value. You're, you're getting nothing on this one. Here's just some friendly advice. If the price is too good to be true, listen, it probably is. You know, and unless you're buying from a verified retailer or a trusted marketplace, 
case, there's always a chance that you're going to get a 5090 like this, you know, essentially just cosplay. You've got a lot of sources on these scams being eBay, Amazon, unverified sellers. Those are areas where you can see a deal and just take your time and look if it's too good to be true. Man, most of the time, 99% of the time it is. And a lot of these scams can bypass detection by doing stuff like this, where they're using the original packaging and coolers and things like this. And by the time you find out, it's sometimes too late. So be smart out there. I don't want to see you, you get ripped off. There's a lot of money to lose. Now, while eBay is full of scams, the Navy Exchange is quietly selling real 5090s for MSRP. Huh, let's take a look. Now, unlike regular stores, the Navy Exchange is probably the first to sell RTX 50 series GPUs at MSRP. Now, this story came from a Redditor who bought a 5090 for $1,900 at the Navy Exchange. He found it. There's a bunch of brown boxes you have to sift through military exchanges and then was going through. He found a bunch of GPUs. He's like, oh, it's 5070, 5080. Oh, 5090. 1900 bucks too. That's not bad for a Founders Edition card, which is what he found. Yeah, this Reddit user was able to find a GeForce RTX 5090 for himself, an incredible 1900 bucks. So the MSRP, $2,000. He had a credit card, store rewards. So it ended up coming down about 100 bucks. So you're at 1900 bucks. That's extremely rare these days since the 5090 sells for over 2700 at a minimum at most parts of the world. The user informed him that NEX also had several RTX 5070s and 5080s listed for their MSRPs, but they had a single 5090, which he grabbed before anyone else. And check it out. That's his card. That's that beautiful Founders Edition 5090 that he has uh, inside his Lee and Lee 011, the case that everyone has, right? What case do you have? Let me know in the comments down below. So yeah, it's true. The Navy Exchange has become the unlikely hero of the graphics card market. You've got a legit Founders Edition card here for $1,900. You've got no funny business, no third-party markups. Catch, though, you've got to have military access. So keep this in mind. While the rest of us are getting scammed on eBay, someone's grandpa is casually buying a 5090 at MSRP between picking up coffee and socks on base. Unreal. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Make sure that you like and subscribe. I've got a bunch more videos coming out as usual, and we will see you next time.